Okay, we're back here. We're talking a little bit more about using a steady rest. And if everything's straight across, there's no problem. Now, this one I actually, a little bit ago, we were in our previous video, we got it straight, everything was fine here. I purposefully set these wrong. And you can be wrong in two directions. And as you see here, the straight ahead is pretty straight on this. And so you'll see it's not moving much, if any. But up and down, this is a whole bunch wrong height. So what will happen, you can take a cut and test this, and it will be correct for size over, you know, three, four, five inches. You'll start having a little bit of trouble after that, but it will be correct for diameter because the in and out is right and the little bit of up and down won't make that much difference. It'll make more difference as you go closer to the headstock, but you'll be able to run a ways and it won't be messing with you for size. And if your part is like this one where you're relatively flexible, the only thing it'll really do is take a little bit more load on your bearings out here and it won't be a real problem. Where it becomes a serious problem is on a rigid piece of shaft. Because if your shaft is fairly rigid, then you're going to either destroy because of the loading here on your, your points as you're, you're set up wrong. You've got way, way too much load to make it do this out of balance. Or the thing you'll commonly see and what somebody was just asking about and why I hadn't thought, you know, a lot of this stuff you don't think to mention because you already know the answers. It's the questions that I'm missing. Not to be arrogant, but I'm missing the questions. Once it was answered 20 years ago, I forgot that it was a problem anymore. You just know. So what happens is by being off of center a lot, and then this really happens in the three jaw, as this comes around, and, and it would be like this in this time, so it's pulling out of this third jaw, and then it comes around again and a different point is up there and the next one pulls out a little. As this rotates around, it keeps pulling out and it'll walk right out of the chuck on a relatively rigid piece. It can walk out of a four jaw also, but not as likely because you don't get the walking between the three points the same. At the four points, it tends to more common just tear things up, make vibrations, um, cause you problems, but not come out. Again, if it's a super rigid point part, it can come out of a four jaw too. Anyway, the way to check and see if you think you might be having problems with that, while it's not common when you set things up correctly like we did, um, you could have problems if your tailstock is off from your headstock. So with the tailstock off from the headstock, you're going to adjust for your incorrect height at your tailstock, and then you're going to have problems with it walking out of the lathe. So the other way you check that is, again, with two indicators. You could use just one and move it to two different places, check one and then check the other. Uh, and that's what I would have done 40 years ago when indicators were $200 a piece. But when you buy these today for 30 with dollars that aren't worth as much, I buy lots of them. The stands are the expensive part today. Those are about $100 for the stands. But uh, I still buy lots of them. And uh, it's, it's not just checking one direction. You've got to check up and down and in and out both. Now, while I'm here, I mentioned something also yesterday. And I had mentioned it, but thinking about it, we might just as well show it. So I'm kind of messing up the three minutes I told Bert this was going to be. We're adding on some more. Let's get our steady rest out of here. Because I, I mentioned it, but you know, showing it has some value for people. And as a side note, it's not much of a lathe, but if somebody wants a lathe similar to this, but in bad shape, it's the one we were throwing uh, chuck keys with. <laughs> it's actually for sale. Well, it has some parts similar to the ones I use, and I will store it outside and just keep it like that. If uh, somebody wanted it, 
It could work for a mechanic shop. It could do some work for people. It's for sale here in Alaska. It's on Craigslist. Not, not a lathe I would recommend for a machine shop that wants to really be doing work. There's too many problems with it. So here is how you check in. It would take more to set up for all of her, but this is this is where you would do as far as oh I didn't lock that down either. How you would check and see see your run out on your quill up at the uh, headstock, and I take this off, and, but you get the you run around. This one has a key in the bottom which you'd have to hold the, the indicator in as you go across the key. You could also use a test indicator to get a little better idea and. To really do this, you want to lock this down all the way. You know, I just did the quick lock that you do for drilling movements, so it's, it's, that lock's more at the back. It doesn't really bring it down precision. So, yeah, a little bit more about uh, tailstocks again and uh, steady rest both. Yeah. Yeah.